Welcome back. I'm so excited to continue our series with you today. Last week, we talked about the uncertainties that weather and illness can bring, but that we can be certain of God's presence and His power. Today, we're going to talk about relating to others. Have you ever built something with someone else or even a group? Maybe you were even competing with other groups to see who could have the tallest or the strongest building. Whenever we do this, there are things that we love about working with others, such as the feeling of acceptance, teamwork, and encouragement. But there are also things that make it difficult, or maybe we don't like at all, such as the other team winning, team members not helping out, or suggesting ideas that don't get used. Today, we're going to talk about relating to others. Have you ever felt stress about relating to others? What are some of those stressors? Take the next 30 seconds to think of how relating to others brings you stress. it is about relating to others that stresses us out. Well, last week we talked about how Jesus was God, but when he came to earth, he had all the feelings of man. Do you think Jesus ever dealt with people not liking him? Yes! There are tons of stories in the Bible about this happening. Remember last week how we talked about Jesus had power over the wind and storm and illness? Do you think he had power over people who were being mean to him and wanted to crucify him? Sure he did! So why didn't he use that power? Let's look at the Bible to see why in Matthew 26, verses 52 through 54. But before we read about how Jesus responded, let's think about what was happening. The crowds had come to seize Jesus like he was a criminal. The crowds of people that hated him and wanted to kill him. One of his disciples grabbed a sword and was ready to fight back. But listen to what Jesus said to him. Put your sword back into its place. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and He will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled, that it must be so? Then check out in Matthew 26, 55, what Jesus said to the crowds. Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. I wonder why Jesus didn't use His power. What did Jesus show the people who were mean to him instead of hate? Jesus loved instead of hating. Jesus understands the pain of betrayal and mean things said and done, but he still loved instead of hating. This reminds me of 2 Timothy 1.7 from last week. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. We become followers of Jesus when we accept that the free gift of rescue that happened when Jesus took on the pain of the cross, not for his sins, but for our sins. When we are followers of Jesus, we can lean into God's spirit for help in times of fear and worry and hardship. When you're facing people who are mean to you this week, what part of 2 Timothy 1.7 might help you through it? I've learned over the years and through many of my own troubled relationships that sometimes God takes away what I'm afraid or worried about, but sometimes He just loves me through it. Either way, I can rest in His power and His love. That's what faith is all about. Do you think God wants to hear about what troubles you? Do you think God knows the good and the bad that you have done? Does He love you anyway? I think these are common questions we ask ourselves. Here are some verses that help me when I'm wrestling with these questions. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. John 3.16-17, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And Romans 5, 8, but God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. All of these verses tell me that I can be certain of God's love for me, even though he knows me, all of me. Last week, we talked about some things we can do to remember that we aren't alone in times of worry or stress or fear. Can you remember some of them? Did you try any of them this past week? To combat fear, worry, and stress, 
First, we can come and cast. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Next, we go to God. Tell him what worries you. Throw your worries on him because he loves you. And you can find courage. Trust in the one person who has all the power over all you're worrying about, God. God will be with you as you walk through your troubles. He will not leave you alone. Trust in him. Find courage in his presence and replace. Philippians 4, 6 through 8 tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about those things. Replace your fearful thoughts with thanksgiving and truth and praise for God. Be thankful that the God of the universe wants to help you and love you through even scary things like relationship problems, bullies, and meanness. You can be certain of God's love for me, even though he knows you. As we close today, I want to read you some verses that help me in times of stress over relationships especially. Psalm 56. Be gracious to me, O God, for man tramples on me all day long and attacker oppresses me. My enemies trample on me all day long, for many attack me proudly. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. In God, whose word I praise. In God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? I also think about this psalm when I begin to listen to the negative things people can say sometimes. Psalm 139, 13 through 14. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. And lastly, when I am in a situation where I can either support and love someone or I can follow a crowd and be mean, I try to remember how loved I am by God and that I should love others like he loves others. Mark 12, 30 through 31, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Will you pray with me? Father God, thank you for loving us um, and loving me even though um, I am not perfect. Um, thank you for loving me exactly as I am and for loving all of us exactly as we are. Um, God, I pray this week that you will help us to remember your love as we deal with people around us, that we will show your love and your goodness and your kindness all the time, not just when others are nice to us, but when others are mean or maybe say things that we don't like. Please always help us to remember your love and your kindness and goodness and remember that we can be certain in you even when other things feel uncertain. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining me this week. I hope you will come back next week as we talk, continue to talk about uncertainties in our lives and the certainty that we have in God. Bye. Bye.